The Jack Benny Program, transcribed and presented by Lucky Strike. You know, folks, nothing, no nothing beats better taste. And remember... Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky Strike means fine tobacco, richer tasting. Fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky Strike. Lucky Strike. Friends, I think you'll agree that smoking enjoyment depends on the taste of your cigarette. For nothing, no nothing beats better taste. And Lucky's taste better. Cleaner and fresher and smoother. You see, Lucky's better taste starts with fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco. Remember, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. But equally important, Lucky's are made better to taste better. Made round and firm and fully packed. That's why Lucky's draw freely, smoke evenly, and give you a cleaner, fresher, smoother taste. So friends, get the one thing you want most in your cigarette, better taste. On your next trip to the cigarette counter, be happy. Go lucky. You'll find... Lucky tastes better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky strike. Lucky strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Rochester, Dennis Day, Bob Crosby, the sportsman quartet, and her truly Godwell. gentlemen, we'd like to take you back to New Year's Day. It's morning, and Jack Benny has just finished his breakfast. Do you want anything else, boss? No, no, that's enough. You know, I never feel like eating too much after a big night out. Oh, yeah, I forgot to ask you. What did you do on New Year's Eve? Well, I went to a nightclub where they gave you all the drinks and all the food you wanted for six dollars. All the food you wanted, eh? Yeah. Rochester, before you put my tuxedo away, take the lamb chops out of the pocket. <laughs> now, let's, uh, let's get the table cleaned off, and I'll help you with the dishes. Now, I don't want to be late for the Rose Bowl game. Okay, I'll do the dishes. No, no, Rochester, I'll do them. I want to try out that new electric dishwasher I got for Christmas. But, boss, there's something wrong with it. Nonsense. You probably don't know how to operate it. I'll show you how. Now, you put the dirty dishes in like this. And you close the door. Now, you turn on the switch. There, that ought to be enough. And now, to take the dishes out, you open the door like this. There shouldn't be. It's a new machine. I'm going to try it again. Get some more dishes out of the cupboard. But, but boss... Open the cupboard. Okay. <laughs> what was that? Those are the dishes I washed yesterday. <laughs> I can't understand what's wrong. Neither can I. I put it together the same day that I assembled the other kitchen appliances. Yeah, I don't see why it should break the dishes. Looks all right from the outside. Let's take a look on the inside, then. Oh, for heaven's sakes, Rochester. Look at the egg beater belongs on the mix master, not in the dishwasher. <laughs> then I must have put the part from the dishwasher in the mix master. Why? Oh, well, this morning I tried to mix a cake. When I turned on the switch, a big arm came out, grabbed me by the back of the neck, threw me in the bowl, and scrubbed me on both sides. <laughs> what? And before I knew it, I was sitting in the cupboard on a third shelf. <laughs> he had even put some away for you. <laughs> Rochester, call the appliance company and tell them to come out and fix the machine. I'll get the door. You finish the dishes. Coming, coming. Coming, coming. 
Hello, Polly. <laughs> hello, Jack. Oh, hello, Bob. I thought you were going to the Rose Bowl game, too. Well, I am, but I decided to come by here to talk to you first. What about? I'd rather not talk about it here. Can we go in the den? Uh, certainly, Bob. Follow me. Well, here we are. What is it you want to talk to me about? Can you close the door first, Jack, please? Okay. What is it, Bob? What is it? Mm, would you mind closing the window? The window? Well, all right. And pull the shade down, too. <laughs> Bob, for heaven's sakes, what's the matter? What do you want to talk to me about? Jack, you've got to stop kidding me about the way that I say Manischewa the bits. <laughs> oh, Bob, that's not important. After all, it was just a little fluff. Little fluff, little fluff. <laughs> Quiet, Bob. <laughs> Anyway, Bob, Bob, it's nothing to worry about. Well, I know, but you began kidding me about it, and my wife began teasing me, and she showed me how that all of our kids could pronounce it. Well, that's not... Wait a minute. Your youngest daughter's only seven months old. She can't even talk. Well, she still says it better than I do. <laughs> no. Yes, and it's not my fault, either. I tried to learn how to say it. I must have some sort of a mental block, because I could never say it right. Well, look, Bob, let me help you. Don't worry about it. Let me help you. Now, let's break it up into syllables and work on it. Okay. Now, look. Repeat after me. Mana. Mana. Shevitz. Shevitz. Mana Shevitz. Mana Shevitz. Look, Bob, let, let's, let's try it again, Bob. Now, don't be nervous. Let's try it again. Now, try it. Mana. Mana. Shevitz. Shevitz. Mana Shevitz. Mana Shevitz. <laughs> Bob, look at once. I know you can get it. Now, let's try it again. Mana. Mana. Shevitz. Shevitz. Mana Shevitz. <laughs> Darn it, now you've got me doing it. Let's try it again. <laughs> what? Mana. 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 Shevitz. Shevitz. Lucky strike. <laughs> you know, Polly is the only smart one here. Now, Bob, stop worrying about a little mistake. It's nothing. After all, your singing is the most important thing. Oh, now, wait a minute, Jack. I'm primarily known as a band leader, not a singer. What are you talking about? You have one of the best voices in the country. I'd be happy if I had the best voice in my family. <laughs> what? Well, I was second till Gary grew up. <laughs> oh. Say, Jack, I better be running along. You, you want me to give you a lift to the game? No, thanks, Bob. Rochester's gonna drive me. Okay, see you later. I'll see you at the door. Oh, there's the phone. Well, you go answer it. I, I can walk to the door myself. Oh, yes, you're different from the other musician. <laughs> I'll see you later, Bob. So long. So long. Hello? Hello, Jack. This is Don. Oh, hello, Don. I'm waiting for you. I'm afraid you'll have to go to the game without me, Jack. Why? What's wrong? Well, you know that new car, the MG, my wife gave me for Christmas? Oh, yes, Don. That... That little English car. Gee, it's certainly a sporty job. Eh? Yeah, I know, but it's been giving me trouble for the last three days. What's the matter? Can't you get it started? No, I can't get it off. <laughs> well, look, John. John. <laughs> oh, you really fit on that one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I feel on that. I feel on that. <laughs> Bit on that one. <laughs> now, Don, hurry over. We still have to pick up my new girlfriend, Iris. I want to take her to the game. Oh, Jack, I've been thinking it over, and I don't feel that I should go with you. But, Don, we were going to the game, and then we were going to come back to my house and have dinner together, make an evening of it. I know, Jack, but 
It'll be a better without me. After all, you know the old saying, two's company, three's a crowd. Well, Don, in your case, one... No, it's... <laughs> it's a new year. I won't say it. I won't say it. Well, I'll tell Iris. I'll tell Iris you couldn't come. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, Rochester. Rochester. Yes, boss? Uh, Mr. Wilson won't be here for dinner tonight. It'll be just the young lady and myself. Yes, sir. Now, Rochester, this young lady, this girlfriend of mine has never had dinner at my house, and I'd like to impress her. Oh, don't worry, boss. The table is set beautifully. Flowers, and you'll eat by candlelight. Good, good. What'd you do about the champagne? Same as always. I took a cold bottle of Seven Up and slapped a mum's label on it. <laughs> what? And when you open it, I'll be behind the screen with my pop gun. Oh, good. Shall we synchronize our watches now? <laughs> okay, I've got 11, 17 and a half Roger <laughs> Okay I want everything to go off smoothly be I'll get it You finish everything in the kitchen Yes Coming, coming Oh, hello, Dennis On Wisconsin, on Wisconsin Plunge right through that line Look, Dennis, Dennis Just, just come in the house Yes, sir Run that ball clear round the Rose Bowl, a touchdown sure this time. Dennis, on Dennis, Wisconsin. Dennis. Why are you singing Wisconsin song? Oh, I'm going to cheer for them today at the game. But why? Because I want Wisconsin to win. Why, Dennis, isn't that being a little disloyal? After all, you've been living here in Southern California for nearly 15 years. Living here, yes, but look where I was born. Oh, were you born in Wisconsin? No, New York. <laughs> Wait a minute, Dennis. This is the start of a new year. Don't make me mad. Okay, but say, Mr. Benny, if you like Southern California and I'm rooting for Wisconsin, maybe we could make a little bet. Well, all right, Dennis. How much would you like to bet? Two million dollars. Oh. oh, two million dollars, eh? Uh-huh. Well, Dennis, may I ask you something? Where in the world would you get two million dollars? I could borrow it from the boys in the band. <laughs> oh, fine. I guess they have $2 million. Uh-huh. And when, pray tell, did the boys in the band get $2 million? A couple of years ago from someone named Brinks. <laughs> they did not. They weren't even in Boston at the time. But wait a minute. Remley was off that week. <laughs> No, no, they'd never, they'd never, they'd never stoop to robbery. Oh, no, you ought to see Bagby dressed up as an old woman. <laughs> Look, Dennis, please go to the game. Yes, sir. Well, goodbye. Bye. Oh, Rochester. Yes, boss? Uh, you better get the car out. I gotta pick up my girl, Iris. <laughs> Gee, Iris, I, I never saw you look so nice. You're sure pretty when you're all dolled up. This dress cost me 30 bucks. <laughs> well, it certainly looks nice. Boy, am I lucky I met you. You know, Iris, I never would have met you if I hadn't been hungry that night. I'll, I'll never forget. I was driving along looking for a place to eat, and I drove right past Ciro's and the Macambo, and it was, it was just fate that made me turn into Simon's drive-in. <laughs> and there, like a vision of loveliness, you came toward me. Gee, you smelled so good. Yeah, it was chicken gumbo night. Twenty-five cents a bowl, a meal in itself. Yeah, but I'm really the lucky one. Imagine me going out with a rich guy like you. A guy who can afford to wear a coat with a fur collar. Fur collar? Boss, it slipped off again. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> Never mind, Rochester, and watch your driving. Look at that sign that says speed limit 25 miles an hour. I got a wide open, but you'll never make it. <laughs> <laughs> now, Rochester, drive up to the Rose Bowl entrance and let us off. Then you can park the car. Yes, sir. <laughs> Come on, Iris, and hold my hand so we won't get separated. Tickets, tickets, hold your own tickets, please. Here you are. Hello, Eddie. Hello, Iris. What's the special for tonight? Beef soup and boiled potatoes. Come on, Iris. Forget <laughs> business for a while. <laughs> okay. Now, let's see. Our seats are in tight. Hi, Jack. Oh, hello, Bob. So you know Iris, don't you? Sure. Say, Iris, are you still working at the Shamrock Cafe? No, I'm back at the drive-in. Jack thought I ought to be outside where it's healthier. <laughs> Darn right. What's the use of being in California if you can't enjoy the sun? Yeah, but I sure wish I could get off the night shift. <laughs> you will, honey. Just save your tips. That's all. I do, but every time I get a little ahead, you want to go to a movie or something. <laughs> well, it won't always be that way, you know. Hey, look who's here. Hi, Iris. Happy New Year. Same to you, Lefty. Lefty? Hmm. You know everybody, don't you? That's Lefty Flanagan. What a sport. He always orders a la carte. <laughs> well, don't talk to him. But Lefty's a big tipper. Oh, hi, Lefty. <laughs> now, let's see. Where do we... Hello, Mr. Benny. Why, Mr. Kitzel! <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, what are you doing here? A question. I'm here to see the game, of course. Oh, oh, do you have, do you have trouble getting tickets? Did I had trouble. I came here the day before they were put on sale, and I stood in line all night. Oh, yes, people do stay in line all night for the Rose Bowl game. What happened in the morning? The box office opened at 7. I waited my turn, bought my tickets, but they turned out to be tickets to a burlesque show. <laughs> tickets to a burlesque show? How could they make a mistake like that? I made the mistake. In the smog, I got in the wrong line. <laughs> oh. Are you here at the game alone? No, I got to meet my wife, which is not here yet. Oh, that's too bad. I'd like to have seen her again. Tell me, has she lost any weight? No, nope. that's why she's delayed. Well, how, could, how could that delay her? She was carrying a corsage of roses, and they thought she was afloat in the parade. <laughs> oh, Mr. Kitzel, you're joking. Joking, he said. She won second prize. <laughs> What do you know? Yeah. Well, we better get to our seats. I hope you enjoy the game. Oh, this is a certainty. Well, goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Oh, Mr. Benny, you know it's a coincidence running into you today because it was exactly six years ago at the Rose Bowl game that I first met you? Say, that's right. You had a little hot dog stand here. Yeah, and I made so much money from my hot dog stand that I opened a little cafe and sold hamburgers and quick lunches. Well... This too was successful, so I went downtown and I opened up a regular fine big restaurant which became very popular. Isn't that wonderful? Then I built branches in Glendale, Pomona, Burbank, and Pasadena. No. To supply my chain of restaurants, I opened a meatpacking house and my own bakery. Say, your business really grew. Grew hoo hoo. <laughs> Last week, I sold out everything. You did? Yeah, and after paying all my income taxes, I will have enough money. To retire? No, to buy a hot dog stand. <laughs> What? This is my third time around. <laughs> All I can say, Mr. Kitzel, is good luck again. See you later. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Oh, 
Well, come on, Iris. Let's get to our seats. Hey, Jack, I'll be right with you. I'm going to go get some programs. Okay, hurry up, Bob. Now, come on, Iris. Our seat should be in this aisle here. Stubbs, please. Let's see the numbers in your stubs. Here you are, Usher. Right this way, up this aisle, the row number... Oh, hello, Iris. Hello, Nick. How are things? Fine, I'm on parole now. <laughs> come on, come on, Iris, for heaven's sakes. Bob, let's get to our seats. Okay. Hey, here comes the band out on the field. Yeah, look at there. They're spelling out L-S-M-F-T. Well, naturally. On college campuses all over the country, Lucky Strike sells more than the two other leading brands combined. Hey, don't they look nice marching up and down the field? Boy, just look at them. Boy, what a sight. Smoke Lucky Strike. We'll make a bet, it's a cigarette you'll like. Just tear and compare. Not a pump is rough if you pump a Lucky Strike. So round. These seats are okay, aren't they? They sure are. Yeah, we can see the whole field swell. Uh, pardon me, folks. Pardon me. <laughs> huh? What do you think I ought to get my wife for Christmas? Christmas? Mr. Christmas was a week ago. This is New Year's. You mean it's already 1949? <laughs> It's 1953. Oh, my goodness. I better get home. <laughs> now, go home to your wife. Well, I can't because she's here at the Rose Bowl game. Have you seen her? For heaven's sake, I don't even know your wife. Now, leave us alone. Okay. Hap! Happy New Year! <laughs> Go, go already. Gee, it's a shame that a guy in that condition being allowed to get out. Yeah. Are you comfortable, Iris? Uh-huh. Only I'm a little hungry. Hungry? Uh, Say, if you want me to, I'll go get some hot dogs. Okay, go ahead, Bob. Bring three hot dogs. Okay, I'll be right back. What about mustard? I got some in my pocket. I came straight from work. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, Bob, just get the Frankfurter. Okay, I'll be right back. You know, Iris, I think this game will be one hey, of the best... Pardon me, folks. Pardon me, folks. Oh, no. It's the happy time again. <laughs> what is it now? Have you seen my wife? Look, mister, I never saw your wife in my life. I don't know her. Now, leave me alone. Okay, okay. Happy New Year! <laughs> Gee, the people get me at football games. Yeah. This wasn't going to be... Hey, look! Look, a guy just jumped out of a plane in a parachute. <laughs> hey, he's trying to land right here at the Rose Bowl. Of all the silly things to do, I wonder who would... Hello, Mr. Benny! <laughs> Get in! <laughs> Dennis, be careful! What a crazy guy. Say, hey, here I am with the hot dogs, kids. Oh, thanks, Bob. Yeah, thanks. Well, I just got back in time. Hey, look... There comes the USC team out on the field. Boy, are they a husky bunch of guys. And just listen to that crowd. Hey, here they're coming right past us. Hello, Iris! 
<laughs> Iris, that settles it. I take you to a football game and you know everybody. Well, I can't help it. The boys on the USC football team always eat at the drive-in. They all like me. Well... In fact, they voted me Miss Unnecessary Roughness of 1952. I don't care what offer have say, here comes that drunk again. Isn't that all? Say, pardon me, mister, have you seen my wife? Look, I told you I don't even know. Hmm. Hey, Iris. Iris, watch me fix him. What did you say, mister? Have you seen my wife? Yes, yes. As a matter of fact, that's her sitting there two rows in front of us. The lady in the red hat. Oh, thank you. I'm sorry I'm late, sweetheart. What took you so long getting here? How do you like that? <laughs> Out of a hundred thousand people, I picked the right one. <laughs> That's amazing. Well, I'm glad you got rid of him so he won't bother us during the game. Say, Bob, you're really a rabid football fan, aren't you? I sure am. In fact, I'm so interested in the game that I'm writing a book based on the life of that all-American linebacker from UCLA. Well, what's the name of the book? I remember Muma. <laughs> Bob, that's one of the worst things. Hey, look, Jack, look, here comes the Wisconsin team. Say, those Wisconsin players look awfully good, too, don't they, Iris? They sure do. Hello, Iris! <laughs> well, that's the last straw. I'm leaving. I'm not even going to stay and see the game. Now, let me tell you something else, Iris. You and I are through. Our engagement is broken. Wait a minute. If you're breaking the engagement, what about the ring? I'm not giving it back to you. <laughs> Goodbye. Ladies and gentlemen, when a feller needs a friend, he needs a helping hand. And the hands of the Big Brothers have helped thousands of growing boys to find the way to a useful life. Be a Big Brother yourself. All you have to invest is your time and your interest. Write Big Brothers of America, Philadelphia 3, Pennsylvania. Thank you. Jack will be back in just a moment, but first... Nothing, no nothing beats better taste. And remember... Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. For Lucky's bright means fine tobacco, richer tasting fine tobacco. Lucky's taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. Lucky's strike. Lucky strike. Friends, it stands to reason. The cigarette for you to smoke is the one that tastes better because when all is said and done, nothing, no nothing, beats better taste. And Lucky's taste cleaner, fresher, and smoother. You'll agree once you try them, and here's why. Lucky's better taste really begins with fine tobacco. Most anyone can tell you, LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine, light, naturally mild tobacco with a wonderful aroma and even better taste. And Lucky's also taste better because they're made better. They're round and firm and fully packed to draw freely and smoke evenly to give you a cleaner, fresher, smoother smoke. So get the better taste that fine tobacco in a better made cigarette can give. When you buy cigarettes, ask for Lucky Strike. Be happy, go lucky, get better taste today. Good night, everybody. We're a little late. Be sure to hear The American Way, starring Horace Height for Lucky Strike, every Thursday night over the station. I'm sure you'll enjoy this great new program. Consult your newspaper for the time. The Jack Benny program is written by Sam Perrin, Milt Josephsberg, George Balzer, John Packerberry, and produced and transcribed by Hilliard Marks. The Jack Benny program is brought to you by Lucky Strike, product of the American Tobacco Company, America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. Stay tuned now for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately over most of these same stations. This is the CBS Radio Network. <laughs>